Hey guys, so it's April 22nd, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm ploughing my way through uh, Reel 2. I've got about four tracks left on Reel 2, so I'm getting through that quite quick. Um, mind you, those four tracks are going to be quite hard, so, um, you know, I'll do the best I can, as fast as I can, which is the same. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I actually sh shaved the moustache off, I couldn't take it, the, the hair was going on my lip, and... Yeah, so I've got no moustache. I'm keeping the beard. The beard will stay till Mega Man is done. So at the minute I look a bit like an Amish farmer. But it's okay. I can deal with that. Locked away in my little room. Anyway, ramble. Um, yeah, uh, today I was working on... Um, there's a scene in the movie where uh, where Wiley is instructing his, uh, his bots. So we get a kind of... Um, you know, that kind of dark Wiley texture as it, as it is. I mean, a lot of the music for Wiley, because a lot of the scenes he's in, it doesn't need, uh, there's not so much that needs highlighting, you know. He never really says anything for me to, to really say, listen to that, you know what I mean. All, all of his, uh, because after a while, all of his uh, dialogue starts to, uh, you know, you, you just have to kind of take it all in. So, I mean, I can't just spend the whole time going boom, 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 listen to this, listen to this. So... A lot of a lot of what I have to do with Wiley scenes is just um, underscore. So just letting the audience know that what he is talking about is bad, you know. So um, so I've got lots of um, very similar to yesterday's track. Very uh, very kind of um, you know just that kind of dark uses quite a few of the same elements as yesterday, although this one's got more of um, an orchestral presence. This scene, that the scene where he's instructing the bots is relatively short, and um, the following scene has uh, a scene with rock and roll, rock and roll. Um, yeah, so the scene with Mega Man and um, his sister, Roll, um, are having a, a conversation about Rock not really wanting to fight, but you know he has to because he's the only one capable of stopping the great evil. So. Um, so I managed to get in some, uh, some emotional. Again, I went with French horns because it's very strong and that represents the character for me, conceptually. Very like uh, you know, it's got a lot of. Um, it, it sounds heroic without being you know bombastic, without being really large, you know. So it's got that kind of heroic kind of um, you know responsibility. The, the solo French horn there. I actually have a um, I have two two solo French horns um, playing off each other, um, and I wanted to give a sense of responsibility. I mean, if if you if you sit down with someone and say, "I want you to make a piece of music that represents responsibility," you know, it's quite tricky. So I went with I went with that French horn line that plays off itself. I'll turn it up a bit in case you can't hear it. So if you listen, two French horns coming in now. They kind of play within each other, so in and out, which is uh, which sounds quite. Um, I think it sounds good. I like it, and my judgment counts when I'm the composer. So uh, I'm gonna go with that. Um, yeah, there was some stuff I wanted to talk about, but you know, it just slips my mind sometimes. Um, yeah. So yesterday I was uh, I was having a conversation with. A friend who works at Hybrid Two, which is my, my sound and music uh, production studio. I was having uh, a conversation with Glenn, Glenn X Govan. I hope I pronounced that right. Anyway, um, about um, 
how you blend music with, um, with sound and how you balance uh, musical score with the sound that's already present in a film. And um, the way I approach it is, is whenever I'm writing music, there's always a foreground, midground, and background. So if there's if there's nothing on screen that takes for okay, how to approach it? Okay, so you for dialogue, dialogue, ninety nine percent of the time is foreground. So if there is dialogue going on, your music won't have any foreground elements, or shouldn't. You know, you you can get away with it, but it, you know, to make life easy for the sound mixer, it shouldn't have a foreground. So you shouldn't have like you know huge like solos or anything going off when someone's talking unless of course what they're saying isn't um isn't integral to the story you know like if someone's like if there's a crowd of people and they're all shouting at each other or something you know you can kind of go over the top of them if it's in context but if you've got one character speaking to another you need to stay out the way of the dialogue so you're focusing your music as mid-ground and background you're supporting the dialogue rather than um you're supporting the dialogue um, emotionally but you're also supporting it in a kind of orchestration sense so you're looking I mean if the guy's got a high voice you know play down in the low instruments you know you're, you're basically treating the dialogue as another instrument so um, sound effects uh, like 60% of the time are like that was an odd figure yeah but 60% of the time are foreground so things like um, that are integral to the story so if there's like um, you know footsteps in the background or something your music like and that's integral to the story so that makes our characters look and that has you know an impact on the story you can't cover those footprints if they're really low you have to go even lower so the footprints are now the foreground so you're supporting footprint sounds or if it's machine gun fire you know that's not so much a necessity to the story but when you get loud explosions or uh, machine guns or constant loud sounds um even though they're not integral to the story, they take foreground because if you try and compete with them, you'll just get all muddied up. So um, whenever things get loud in the sound, take the music somewhere else, you know, make it more rhythmic, make it more um, low down, play where the sounds aren't. So if it's, uh, you know, gunfire, which is very, very mid heavy, you know, like in um, frequency, you know, either uh, no point going above because you'll probably ring. So play down low, get your low instruments going while it's there and then bring in the rest when the gunfire ends. Um, so yeah, that's that's how I approach it. I approach it. Consider if if you're working to film, always remember that music has to sit behind uh, the dialogue. Always, pretty much, ninety nine percent. So just imagine those other parts of sound as foreground elements when they're integral to the story, or if they're too loud to compete with. So just stay out of the way. Just stay out of the way. Um, it's it's hard. It's a hard thing to get across. What I mean, but I mean like if you work to film. You'll, you'll know, you'll, you'll see for yourself what I mean. It's just a case of ducking out um, when something else is more important because your music isn't the most important. You're there to, you know, strengthen a story, not to um, get in the way of it or try and tell it your own way because you've got to remember that the audience are actually seeing the pictures as well as hearing your music. So, I mean, if, if two people are very clearly in love on screen, you don't need to have the music going, they're in love. You know, you, 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 you know, you can emphasise the emotion, but you don't need to tell the audience what they can already see. And you don't. And if someone's saying "I love you," you know, that's quite important. So you want to emphasise the meaning of that love, but you don't want to say "I love you" at the same time as them. You know. So anyway, that little rant out of the way. Um, just on another note uh, today, me and Andrew, who's a great orchestrator, who uh, commented on one of my last um, blogs has been helping me with some orchestration and we have been um, I, you know I wrote the Mega Man theme and he has orchestrated it quite nicely for me actually so uh, I don't know how well you can see it but we've got the Mega Man theme here and this is uh, that string brass and choir um, of the Mega Man theme so if anyone would like a copy of that when this film is out, you know, feel free to put in the comments that you want to want to see a copy of it, and I'll uh, I'll ask Andrew, and we'll try and get it out to you. We're planning on doing a uh, a whole suite of Mega Man music after the film, so uh, keep an eye out for that. Okay, so again, time's running out. Um, hope you enjoyed today, and I will see you all tomorrow.